All right, guys, we're finally back with another video and it's almost that time. It's almost time to paint the car. Right now I'm getting ready and I am going through my old gun. I haven't touched this thing in probably eight years and I'm gonna see if it's worthy or not of spraying some primer. So I haven't, <laughs> I did not clean it very well. I don't remember me painting red, so that's kind of concerning. I don't know when did that happen. Uh, the last car I painted was actually white. It was my Integra. Now I could pull this all the way out. You can see, we still have a little bit of residue in there. So we're changing it to the 1.5 tip. Uh, this is the biggest nozzle I have. So we could spray the primer and more of the material will come out. I would probably prefer a 1.7, but a 1.5 will have to do for now. So yeah, this, uh, this gun sprayed very well when it was brand new. Now, I have no idea what's gonna happen. So we're just gonna test it out and I might end up going out and purchasing another one. Seems to be coming out pretty good. All right, so the product that I'm gonna be using today is this high built primer. It's from Custom Shop. So basically this primer lets you fill all the scratches and all the imperfections. And let me show you what I'm talking about. As you apply Bondo, fiberglass, everything, and you start to scuff everything up, it's almost impossible to get rid of all the, those little scratches and imperfections that this bumper has. And there's a ton of them. There's a ton here and everywhere. So basically I applied the filler. I repaired whatever low spots it had. I sanded it down. I got, I eliminated the high spots and the low spots. And now the primer is gonna fill all the scratch marks and just make a new foundation. So then I could block sand everything and make it nice and smooth for the paint. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm gonna hit this with primer and then I sand everything down, block sand it, and make it ready for paint so let's go so basically right now what i'm doing is i'm creating a easier way into and how to pour this paint out of here this primer because it will be filled to the top and i am still going to make a mess but this makes it a little bit easier to pour so basically what i've done i have created holes right along the edge so when I pour this paint and I put this back, there's always paint that sits along here and it could drain back into the can. Okay, so it's the next day and I have the car here. I have removed the fenders. There's no fenders on either side. Gone, okay. Up here, I'm gonna spray it with high build primer, but underneath here, I'm just gonna scuff this up with 400 grid and call it a day and just paint it black. I'm not gonna go too crazy under here because it does not need to be straight. It's underneath the hood, of course. So these pillars oh man these pillars i have spent a lot of time repairing these things they're plastic and since they're plastic they break and they crack so you can see this a large crack here so of course the side skirts are out so that also gives me the ability to spray underneath the door as you can see underneath the door it's gonna have it has blue it has to get painted so yeah right now it looks chaotic and it looks like a mess but this is part of the process. This is what all my projects look like right before I paint everything and I put everything together. It looks like chaos. So over there you can see the bumper, the side skirts, the rear bumper, 
everything is has been primed and it's just sitting out there cooking and I will be wet sanding everything here in a little bit so I'm using the scotch pad to scuff everything up and at the same time clean everything so what I like to do is use just a little bit of Dawn soap with some water and as I'm cleaning it I'm making sure I'm scuffing everything up once again when I was sanding everything down by hand when it was on the car I was just doing the surface I wasn't getting along the edges I don't like to use sandpapers along the edges because I burn through the material very quickly and I kind of just scuff it up with this and it's enough for the paint to adhere to it So you can see the trunk already has been sanded and cleaned and everything has been scuffed up. So uh, basically the hood is going to start to look the same. Once it dries up, it should look something like this where it's just, it looks dull. It doesn't look shiny. So anywhere I see anything shiny, I am going to hit it again and scuff it up because I, like I said, I want the paint to adhere. But uh, I like to do every panel twice. So basically everything gets cleaned twice and I rinse it off. And then I come back and I wipe it down with some grease remover. And then it's ready for primer. So I'm almost done. So I was able to put this car inside here because uh, I actually don't want it to get rained on. So everything's exposed, not only in the engine bay, the trunk is exposed. So check this out. This is a true story. I'm not making this shit up. So when we installed the coilovers, I always said, hey, I'm going to raise these up later once I get the rims. But later came before I could ever expect it so I went to put this car in the garage and it was so low it has scraped and completely destroyed the floor so good thing it did not hit the pan it hit the chassis the subframe and everything's okay but that's how low it was to the ground that it couldn't even go up the driveway so right here, I still have a little bit of a low spot. Giovanni actually sanded this down for me. He actually did a really good job. I told them what to look for. I said, I applied filler here and I said, there's gonna be a cavity here. That's all you wanna see. You don't wanna see Bondo here or here. You wanna see it only in the center right here. And you want everything else to go away because then if you leave some of it here, this will become a high spot, high spot. After I'm done with that, Basically the whole car could get sprayed with high built primer. Everything else looks great to me. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on removing the mirrors right now and the door handles so I could get I could get everything painted. So uh, these door handles do not get high built primer. It's just gonna get scuffed up just like uh, the, the mirrors. It doesn't need it. So some things do and some things don't. The only thing that's not going to match exactly is the engine bay paint. The engine bay paint, I just used Rust-Oleum and I explained in one of my videos why I did that. Uh, basically, when everything gets moved around here, we install headers later on or we mess with any of this stuff, it's going to get scuffed up. So I wanted to be able to re repair it very easily and Rust-Oleum paint, uh, you could pick it up anywhere. You just scuff that area up and you just spray it and you touch it up. So instead of having to mix the paint and order it from the manufacturer, this and that, that is a way easier solution for me. That's what I figured that's what I'm gonna go with and it's gonna be okay. I don't think you're gonna be able to notice it as much. I, I do know that the shine on the uh, automotive paint is gonna be a lot glossier. And of course, since it's uh, base coat clear it should have more of a wet look to it but I think this is gonna be just fine it's gonna 
work just fine. So yeah, basically everything in here gets painted. You can see it's blue. I don't want it blue, it needs to be black. So look how dirty it is. So all this has to get hit with degreaser, clean very well. I wanna make sure I don't get any of this wet while I'm doing that. So I'm gonna just take my time here with a brush and just wash everything, wash the whole thing. And this rubber seal gets removed and I paint under here. All right, so it is time to set the primer down and here we go. I'm here in the garage and I originally was gonna just spray the primer outside, but guess what? In the middle of all this, there is a storm heading towards us, towards Florida, okay? We're probably not gonna get hit that bad here in Lee County, so we should be okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and spray the primer in here and I think I'm gonna be just fine. I have everything maxed up and ready to go. I have my big fan out here. I'm gonna remove that cover and turn it on. And it's almost time for the storm to get here. So you can see the clouds, but we're not gonna let that stop us. We're just gonna keep going and we're gonna finish this project. All right guys, so here we are. I have been block sanding for a while now and everything is looking pretty straight. There, there is some areas that I am going to have to retouch up. Like I discovered there's a little spot right here. This part right here, uh, even with the high built primer, it did not take care of it. So I didn't see that before. I should have block sanded it and put two layers of paint so I could have noticed it. But it didn't caught my attention. It didn't catch my attention. So I'm going to have to address it now. And you can see there's a low spot right there so that has to be addressed and we can move on it looks like the pillars i was able to save and completely repair once i sprayed the high built primer and i block sanded everything down it looks you can't even see it can't even notice that this was repaired so that's a win so still a lot to go but we're moving in the right direction so here we are in this side and in this side you can see I sanded it all the way down to the filler and I continued to block sand it until everything was flat. Until I started to see everything blend in and it was nice and smooth. That's where we're at. I'll probably hit this with another coat of primer and like two different colors and then block it again and see where we're at. See if everything just sands off. If it doesn't, then I'll address it. But it feels very smooth. Uh, everything has been worked out on that so onto the door the door still i haven't even started to sand so i've been choosing a panel at a time and i'm finding wherever the low spots are and then i'm going to go back and address them and then i'm going to move on to this door this door was relatively straight everything else like this panel right here and then the door on the other side they had uh dings and stuff Oh, look, I found another little spot right here. Look, this is very noticeable. You can see there's a little bit of filler that's, that's been applied here. I did that, but right here, there is a low spot. And you can see I'm breaking through, I'm burning through already with the sanding. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it, block sanding it all the way down. I think I'm gonna hit the metal. So I'm gonna have to address this with a glaze putty just a very smooth fill and then come back and block sand it and see where we're at it is currently nine o'clock at night and i think i'm gonna call it a day i've been at this for a while i had giovanni in here earlier he was helping me block sand and since he's new he doesn't know what to look for uh it was kind of a, of a slow process he's just getting the feel for what's what to look for and what to do you have to you know you're training someone that's never done it before and you're trying to make this car look as good as possible so it kind of doesn't make let you do a lot of progress so you kind of slow it slows you down a little bit but i'm happy to teach him and show him how to do this so yeah we'll start again tomorrow morning and we'll see where we're at all right so i finally moved the car outside it has stopped raining enough for me to pull it outside but check this out since I had to wet sand the car in here and block everything in here, look at the mess. 
just a massive mess here. Uh, <clears throat> you can see this is all primer. A lot of the material just gets sanded down. All right, let's see what we have here. Giovanni sanding the side skirts. Giovanni, what are you doing, bro? Tell us. Look into the camera, bro. Giovanni doesn't know what he's doing. So everyone's out here today. They're gonna help out, Chris. What up, guys? He's gonna do the hood for us. He's gonna sand the hood with the electric sander. You first, ready? First time sanding, honestly. Chris, tell us the name of your channel so everyone could go check you out. Bro, you guys need to check out Gallo 12 or 24. It's on YouTube. Literally, you can even just type in Gallo 12 and uh, you just scroll down and you'll see me. Trust me, you'll see me. Alright, so we have been sanding for a couple of hours. I've been working on the car and the boys have been working on the hood, the fender, and the side skirts. Let's go check out what they have done so far. What the frick you doing, bro? <laughs> All right, so here we go. We have some paint. So the next time you see this car, we are gonna be fully painted. Right now, I just have this side painted. I'm gonna do the other side, then I'm gonna do the roof, and I'm gonna do every panel. I'm doing this because it's been raining so much here. I was gonna paint this outside in the paint booth, but it's gonna ruin everything. So we decided, I have to give credit to Giovanni. He came up with this idea. I think it's gonna work just fine. We're just gonna spray one panel at a time, one section at a time. I did this side, I'm gonna do the other side tomorrow, then I'm gonna do the roof, then I'm gonna do the trunk and the hood, and so on and so forth until the car is painted. Uh, because if I don't, every day it's raining and this thing is never gonna get done and we're never gonna put the turbo on the Miata, so it has to get done. I am not gonna show you too much, I'm gonna leave this like this. You're just gonna have to tune in next time to see how it turned out. 